Welcome to Grow and Give, a modern victory garden project from Colorado State University Extension. We're here to help you learn to grow food for yourself, your family, your neighbors, and your community. Share the harvest, keep it local. Let's discuss some things to consider about Colorado climate. The factors about our climate that will affect your garden are the number of frost-free days, temperature and weather extremes, unpredictable weather and temperatures, intense sun, cold nights, low humidity, hail, and wind. To sum that up, our clear atmosphere, normally low humidity, intense sunlight, and sometimes extreme variations in precipitation and temperatures are what make our climate unique. Our range and elevation between 4,000 and 12,000 feet and above influence our climate as well. Let's talk for a minute about extreme temperature swings. This slide illustrates by weather data, at least four times there has been a 70 degree and above change in temperature in just a two day period. So that happened in December 2008, February 1996, December 1989, and October 2019. It also happened on Labor Day weekend in 2020. Usually we have a warm up and then we have an extreme temperature drop, but sometimes it's the opposite. The examples we just gave showed extreme temperature changes that all occurred in the fall and winter. However, it also happens in the spring. We can have several days of really warm spring weather or maybe even a couple weeks. And then those warm ups can be followed again by hard freezes. So the lesson there is don't plant too soon. It's not a guarantee, but you shouldn't plant before your average spring frost date for warm season crops and then the recommended timing before your last spring frost for cool season crops. Soil temperatures warm more slowly than air temperatures. You can test the temperature of the soil by digging a few inches down to see if it's still frozen or very cold. Or better yet, you can use a soil thermometer. You leave it in place in the ground and you check it the same time every day, preferably between 8 in the morning and 10 in the morning. When your soil has reached the temperature recommended for your particular crop and it has stayed that way for a week or even two, then you know it's probably, but no guarantee, safe to plant. Hardy vegetables, such as spinach, kale, lettuces, peas, they can be sown in early spring when the air and soil are still cool. Frost sensitive vegetables like tomatoes, peppers, beans, and squash need warm soil and air temperatures and they will be killed by frost. Because we have rather short seasons to grow food, you can push the envelope a little bit and plant your frost tender plants a few weeks early as long as you offer some sort of protection. You can protect them with water insulated structures like the ones in the photo on the left, or you can use something like a strawberry container lid with holes. If you use a jar, a glass jar, then you need to prop it open during the day or the heat that builds up inside will kill your plants. It's good to know that soil warms faster with raised beds. Organic matter added to the soil in the appropriate amount also can warm up the soil a little bit faster. We've already illustrated what can happen in the fall with warm ups and then extreme temperature drops. So keep your eye out always for early frosts and protect your plants or take them indoors.
You can protect them with row cover fabric, blankets, etc. And then often we have a warm up of a few weeks after our first cold freezing snaps. Colorado is also known for having big hailstorms, particularly on the front range or in high elevations, and these usually happen during the summer. Hail can shred plants, sometimes destroying them completely, especially if they have big tender leaves, such as squash. So they may not be able to recover. If it happens early enough in the season, you can replant. Colorado sunshine can be pretty intense due to high elevation and lower humidity. So some plants that in literature will say it's safe to plant them in full sun may not do well in full sun and will benefit from some shading from the sun. Things like basil, lettuces, peppers, and especially tender seedlings can get sun scorched. So plant in the shade of taller plants or provide a structure. When it's windy, plants can dry out very quickly. They lose water faster from their leaves than they can take it up from the soil. If you live in a windy area, you will need to protect your plants from the wind. You can put up a windbreak with plants or some other material like screening. You can also apply an extra inch or two of mulch, but you may need to hold it down with some sort of netting or other material. And if your soil is drying out quickly because of the wind, then you will need to water more frequently. Learn more, grow more. Contact your local CSU Extension office.